Well, hello, hello, GameCube fans. It's been a long time. But look what I have here. Smells like exploits. Tastes like exploits. Must be exploits! <laughs> Now let's slow that down. What you just saw was me loading Swiss on my GameCube using a game that I just bought for less than $15, along with a hacked game save card that also cost about $15 and a $5 SD card adapter. No soldering. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly, step by step, the four things that you need to use game save exploits so that you can run the Swiss homebrew launcher on your GameCube and run emulators, backup games, and all the other homebrew stuff. For the impatient and the forgetful, there are time codes and all of the goodies that you might want in the description, as well as a link to my Everything GameCube Homebrew in Six Minutes video, which you should watch right after you watch this if you haven't already. Now, if this video does help you, please give it a thumbs up and consider using my Amazon and eBay links. It's gonna give me a little bit of motivation to get my button gear for the next video on the Xeno GC. Now on to number one, you need an authentic game disc for an exploit compatible game. Now, if you go to gchomebrew.com, which is a website I put together for you for this video, You'll find a game save exploits page. It's got a list of all 13 compatible titles to date. That includes some Zeldas, the PAL version of Mario, X-rated biking game, good old fashioned shoot 'em ups mostly Clancy, some classics, F-Zero and Smash, Animal Crossing, and of course, the Pokemons. I have grouped them by a made up metric that I call time to Swiss, which is basically how many seconds and button presses it takes to boot to Swiss, as well as the relative complexity, such as whether you have to just press start, get into a load menu or special menu, or actually go into a mini game. I've also put some notes on how to run each exploit, a link to the video demo, and current prices. Many thanks to the various coders and hackers and wiki and forum contributors that did all the hard work. I just searched it all out and aggregated it here. And if you would like to help me keep this all up to date and correct any mistakes, there should be a suggest edit button somewhere at the top or bottom of the page. Now, if you already have one of these games, great, go dig it out of the closet. If you do not, however, I highly recommend that you get your butt in gear and just pick one of the best ones you can that's in your price range and has a boot to Swiss time that you can live with before a mass of people trying to get their hands on these drives the price up and or they disappear. Now, for a couple of pro tips. Sometimes you can get a good deal on eBay bids, but most of the time you're gonna get locked in a bidding war and end up paying the same price or higher as the buy it now. On Amazon, it's really common to see a listing with no price as if the item is unavailable, but if you click on it anyway, sometimes you'll find that there actually is a used section and it has great deals. And if neither of those work out for you, try giving community sites like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace a try. Number two, you need a hacked game save. On the exploits table at gchomebrew.com, you'll see that every game has a download. This is what you're after. Usually it's a zip file. If not, you can use our old friend extract.me to upload the 7z or rar or whatever, and then re-download it as a zip file. Inside of that zip file, you'll find several GCI files. What's most important is the last letter of the file name. Typically, it ends in P for PAL, J for Japan, or E for everywhere else. In some cases, however, there may be more or fewer regions, or even versions that are specific to that revision of the game. Editor's note. On each disk, on the data side of the disk, is lettering that can only be seen in just the right light and at just the right angle down towards the center of the disk. This is the game's revision. Most disks are the original version of the game, which is designated 0-00. However, 
Player's Choice, Greatest Hits, and other re-releases may be designated 01, 02, 03, or even 20, 30, or some other number. This number will match the hack game save file. Now here's the catch. Since you don't actually have Homebrew on your GameCube yet, you may not be able to use this file directly, but patience, young Padawan, all in due time. Number three, you need to have the latest version of Swiss. Just Google something like GameCube Swiss GitHub release, and that'll get you there. Inside the Swiss archive, you'll find all sorts of goodies. The one that you're looking for is inside the GCI folder, and it's called boot.gci. Now, word of caution, don't get all excited about seeing the action replay or ISO folders. Despite their friendly, tempting, inviting names, these are not the droids you're looking for. Number four, and now here's the tricky bit. Unless you already have some other way to boot your GameCube into Swiss and you're just following along here to help someone else, or you have the other Dolphin system with the homebrew channel already installed, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do with these files all on your own. So this is where we turn to our good friends at eBay and search of the mythical Swiss boot card. Now, even if your ultimate goal is to skip Swiss entirely and boot directly into an emulator or the Game Boy interface or something else, you want a Swiss boot card. Do not get any other type of boot card. However, the problem that you're gonna find is that all of the available boot cards are either for Wind Waker or Smash Bros. So here's how we solve that problem. On every item page, there's a contact seller button. Other editors note, I'm thinking about buying a hundred or so of these things. Should be here by about May 14th. So keep a lookout for the seller Cool AJ86 on eBay. So send them a message and make sure they have the exact information they need. The game title, region, and revision of the game, the download link to the latest game save hack, and the file name of the exact game save hack that matches your region and version of the game. And with that, my friend, you will soon be running Swiss and all sorts of other goodies on your GameCube. Now, if this already answered your question, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up, sub, and hit the bell for personalized recommendations so that you just get my gamer stuff, but don't leave yet because wait, there's more. Bonus round. All of the homebrew that have been updated within the last year or so, most notably Swiss, support both the SD gecko that goes into the memory card slot B and the SD to serial port two adapter, which goes into the bottom of the original DOL 001 revision GameCubes. And all of those modern homebrew support SD cards of any size. However, many of the older emulators and older homebrew still require or just work better with the SD gecko. GCMM, the GameCube memory manager, is one such homebrew. And GCMM is particularly important because the very first thing you absolutely should do once you have Swiss running is to make a backup hacked game save card, which I am going to show you how to do right now. And you'll be able to use this process to create a boot card that works with any homebrew that comes with a GCI version in its download. The first step is to make sure that there's nothing on my SD card that I want. And then I use disk utility, make sure that it is in show all devices mode to select and format my card with MS-DOS FAT32 using a master boot record. Back on the card, I need to create a new folder called MC backup, meaning memory card backup. And inside this folder, I can put as many GCI files as I want. Here, I have some hack game saves for Swiss Boot, Zelda, 007, and GBI. Back up a level, I'm going to copy over GCMM, which I downloaded from the GitHub releases page. Side note, keep in mind, much like GCMM, most emulators can only work from folders with exact and specific names. You need to create those folders on your computer before you try to run them, otherwise you'll get all sorts of strange errors. All games and saves will have to go into the right place. Now once the SD card is ready, it is important that we eject it properly 
not just rip it out. And with our SD card ready, let's head on over to the GameCube. We want to put our hacked game safe card in slot A, our SD Gecko in slot B, and of course, our disc on top. But let's not close the lid just yet, because I want to show you what happens when we boot into the IPL, which is that glassy cube mabob. If we check the memory manager, you can see that Wind Waker and the 007 game saves have hacked logos on them. These are the special files that, when loaded, will cause the game to crash and then look for this other special game save file, boot.doll, the Dolphin application. Any GCI homebrew that we load will be renamed to boot, and it must exist. Without that, the game simply crashes and does nothing, because it has nothing to load. Now, we'll go ahead and close the lid and load our game. For the sake of time, I skipped all the load stuff and we're sitting at the normal load game save screen. Now, as soon as I access the game save, the game glitches as expected and loads the boot save file, which in this case is Swiss. And as it happens, I have a large SD card below in the serial port, which is where I store my game backups so that I can play them without risking wear and tear on the limited lifespan of the laser. And you can see that Swiss has opened that by default. So I'm gonna hit B to eject the serial port card and then joystick over to the SD Gecko and hit A to select it. So now here we can see my MC backup folder and GCMM. Warning, before I do anything else, I'm going to remove my precious hack game save card because I just paid 15 bucks for it and I don't wanna risk screwing it up. And with that out of the way, I'll put in my backup memory card, which is blank, and I'll open up GCMM. First, it asks me where the SD Gecko is and I hit B for slot B. Now I'm going to double, triple, quadruple check that it is in fact my blank card in the GameCube, not my good one. So I'll hit Y for backup and we should see that the card is empty. I'm gonna hit B to back out of that. And now I'm gonna hold down L and hit Z to format the card just for good measure. It's even got a nice tricky confirmation sequence so that you don't accidentally format the card by mistake. So you hit B and then Z. With all that out of the way, I can now restore the card by pressing X. And the first thing I wanna do is select whatever's gonna be the boot homebrew. In this case, I still want Swiss, but I could put GBI here if I wanted to. Next, I can put as many other hack game saves as will fit on the card, but I can only fit one per game. So I can't fit both versions of 007 on here. Since I happen to know that I have the original Rev 1.0, not the player's choice, I'll select that and I'll select Wind Waker for good measure. Now here's another important side note. If I actually wanna play 007 or Wind Waker, even if it's from a game backup, I have to remove the hack game save card. Otherwise, I'll either get stuck in a reboot loop or I'll run the risk of overriding my hack game save with the regular game save. Don't forget it. And with all that said, I now have my very own homebrewed, homebrew, Hack game save card. Ba -da -da -da. Before you go, please go ahead and give this a big fat one, two, three, triple like, because if it was only two, that would actually be an unlike. And subscribe and ring the bell for personalized recommendations so that you do not miss my Xeno GC video, which for those of you who are late to the party is probably the only option you have left. Unless some GC loader clone has finally hit the market by the time you're watching this. And again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you around for the Xeno GC. Adios. Oh, and one last, last thing. I also teach software engineering. See, I even got the t-shirt. So if that's something you're interested in, there should be a link either here or here or somewhere alongside the GameCube video link. And if not, at least in the description. So check that out if it interests you.